Hey guys, we've got a Lenovo G550 here, and I'm going to show you guys um, what is underneath the panel on the back, and really this is just going to be how to replace the uh, internal components of this machine. Um, I've had several machines, several laptops uh, in my life, and this is really different than most of the ones I've had. I've had a ThinkPad, I have a Z61T, a T42, and an X20 ThinkPad. HP Pavilion DB6000 series, HP Compact NC8000 series, Dell Latitude C610, Latitude CPIA, uh, Dell Inspiron 1545, Inspiron Mini 10. I've had quite a couple computers, or quite a few computers. Um, so this is really different. Uh, anyways, on the bottom, a uh, good note to take when you're going to take it apart is you're going to want to take the battery out, turn it off, and obviously and unplug it from power sources so there's no power or at least less circulating through the board. When we do that, battery's at the bottom there. And then there's one, two, three, looks like there's three screws to take this apart. Um, they are in there actually pretty good. So this may take a quick, quick second here. I have had that I have had this off once before. Um, that's how I know what it looks like. And uh, it's a lot different than my ThinkPads. With a ThinkPad, most generally, you have to take um, have to take the palm rest off to get to the memory, even on the new ones. But this is different. HP has done that for years, where you just take the back panel off, and then they used to actually have them on the main board. They'd have one dim on the board and one dim on the bat on the bottom, and then everybody upgrades their memory now. So anyways, it's kind of hard to get off, but once you do get this plastic cover off with the three screws that I'm having lots of fun unscrewing, once you get this panel off, come on, here's what you get. It's all, it's all right here. We have a fan right there, the processor is right there. You can see the copper heat sink going over right to the fan. Makes sense. Fan plugs into the main board there. There's two memory slots. It's DDR3 memory, PC8500. And then here's your wireless card. And this happens to be an Intel Wi-Fi Link 5100AGN. And that plugs into your two antennas, and that looks like a mini PCI or something like that. Um, to replace the memory, you're going to want to pull these two clips. There's one on each side. Pull it away from the memory, and then it'll pop right up like that, about 40 degrees, and then pull it straight out. Um, it's a little bit different than DDR2 memory. Runs on less voltage, and it's better performing. And this is Hynix memory, and it's this is 2 gig, and then that DIMM, or that second piece, that chip, is also 2 gig. So I have 4 gig of DDR3 RAM. Um, the processor, which is here, is the Intel Core 2 Duo T6500 that runs at 2.1 gigahertz, it's dual core. Your graphics card is also right there, uh, which is on the heatsink and is the A or, uh, Intel Graphics Media Accelerator 4500 MHD, which is outputs uh, at 1366 by 768 at 60 hertz on the 15.6 inch monitor, which is widescreen and obviously and high definition at 720p, but it has VGA video, which is fairly standard on laptops these days, and it also has HDMI, which means you can output in 1080p high definition. That's 1080 progressive, which is uh, really the best kind of video output that's available right now. A oh, good thing about HDMI is it, it has a uh, surround sound in it too, so you don't need RCA, and not that that's surround sound, but you don't need RCA and uh, digital wires or optical wires for your audio because it's in the HDMI cable which is very nice. So there's under that panel. Place the hard drive it's right over here. By the way if you wanted to replace the wireless card you would just pull the antennas off of it um, undo the clips and then pull it pull it away from the adapter and it would come out. Um, the only reason that you would want to upgrade this card I think would be to upgrade it to the 5300, which is the extreme version of that. 
of the 5100. What do you gain? Uh, I don't know, guys. You're going to have to look that up. I've had absolutely no trouble with this card, though. Here is the hard drive. 2.5 inches, laptop hard drive, 320 gig, 7200 RPM, Western Digital, Scorpio. Quite a mouthful. It's SATA. There's no adapter on here. It's SATA, which is Serial ATA, not IDE, not PATA, and not EIDE, which is Enhanced IDE. Anyways, it's kind of in a little cage here. You unscrew those two screws here, unscrew the two screws there, and then put it right back in. Line it up, pull the little tab, and it'll slide right back in the socket. Pretty easy to do that. Um, I do have a review and an unboxing video of this machine up online. Um, the chipset is, I believe it's GL40 from Intel, and it only supports up to 4 gig of RAM, um, which is what it came with, and more than enough, at least for my computing needs. Um, graphics card is plenty fast. I've got, uh, it's not a whole lot of dedicated memory, I'll be honest with you. It's only about... I think it's 32 meg, but shared memory goes up to like 1600 or something ridiculous. Uh, I'll show you that HDMI port. So here on the left, to the right of the blue one there, that's HDMI. And if I didn't miss it, it can go in the BIOS. Let's try that again. Power indicators are down here. So power light, battery light, wireless, and then hard drive. And I believe it's F2 to enter setup. Crap. Missing it. F12 will take you to uh, the startup menu. As you can see, it's Lenovo, Intel, Energy Star. Here's the BIOS. Lenovo G550 gives you your processor, Core 2 Duo, 2.1 GHz, 26500, 4 GB of RAM, gives you your hard drive information, and uh, the DVD RW information. You can look at configuration, security, and boot. You can change your boot devices and exit. Pretty standard Phoenix BIOS setup utility. Computer came with Windows Vista, home premium 64 bit. I killed that and put Windows 7 Ultimate 32 bit on it, and it runs just fine. Got a webcam up here. Uh, it's Really nice computer. I'm really, I'm, I've been really happy with it. Got a six-in-one memory card reader along with your wireless switch there, and then your microphone and headphone. Stereo speakers are on the front. They are actually pretty loud. I have them turned down halfway, and the brightness is halfway as well, and it's very bright, brighter than it needs to be really. Uh, Touch-sensitive buttons: volume up, volume down, mute. Useful. It's thin, it's quick, as quick as I need it to be. Um, just as quick as my Z61. DVD drive here, too bad it's not slot loading, but that's alright. Power over here, and then we have one USB 2.0 on the right side, and there are two more over here on the left side, along with Kensington 10100 Ethernet, and whatever that would be. I don't know, some expansion port. And your fan vent. Um, it's not the idea pad. I priced an idea pad and with the same specs it was several hundred more. So I just ended up with this guy. Um, really like it so far. I've got a nice full keyboard with the number pad on the right. Intel Centrino. That's the platform of the processor. Uh, Alps touchpad. That's probably my least favorite thing. A uh, little bit laggy, but you get used to it. Got a designated scroll bar. Two buttons. Kind of loud. Um, compared to my ThinkPad anyhow. No pointing stick, power button, and instant recovery button, but I like it. And that's how you, I suppose, update or upgrade or change or replace the memory and the hard drive in the Lenovo G550. Thank you for watching.